I don't know whether you can see it, but there's some smoke over there at uh, Home Moss. I hope that is uh, controlled burning. But it's an extremely hot day today. We're at about 30 degrees out here. The heat wave continues here in West Yorkshire. Beautiful day, very hot though. I'm not gonna be covering many miles today. So I thought I would just come out and have a look at this spot. We're over at the uh, Dunford Bridge area. So we've got a few strange stones here. They just go up there, you can see them just there. And there was actually a tower here. In fact, there were three towers over the years, many, many years ago. Now this is called Cook's Study Hill. And it's named after the three buildings that used to stand upon it. Now I've got to say, it does have a certain feel to it. The towers aren't there anymore. There's some people uh, down there in Snailsden Reservoir. That's Snailsden Reservoir down there and they are wild swimming. I can see them. <laughs> that looks like good fun. So behind me is the location of Cook's Study and it was an eerie looking building, the first one, very small, more of a gamekeeper's little dwelling really and we're back in the uh, 1800s here. There's lots of different theories why it was called Cook's Study, but the one that I'm inclined to believe is that um, for many years, a, a young lad, a bit of a bookworm, used to come up here and sit in the shade of the tower reading his books and he was called Cook. So uh, the locals, um, sort of like uh, taking the mick a little bit, called it Cook's Study. There isn't actually many pictures of the towers that stood up there on Cook's Study Hill, but I will bring up the ones that I have found. So the land around here was used, as you can imagine, for farming and hunting, and the landowners in later years had it all fenced off, and they employed a gamekeeper and uh, rebuilt the tower uh, with a new one, equally as small, about 10 foot by 10 foot, uh, 20 foot high, and um, that was still known as Cook's Study Tower. Here's a spooky story about this area. In 1840, human remains were found here, right near uh, Cook's Study Hill and the tower. And it was the, the body of, of a woman, a red-headed woman, and uh, her body had actually been preserved in the, it was wrapped in cloth, and it had been preserved in the peat. And the two local guys dug the body up and uh, Strangely enough, they sort of like exhibitioned it down in the village as like a, a bit of a curiosity. But uh, the clothing indicated that uh, she had maybe been there for 60 or 70 years. Nice breeze, lovely and warm. Now, prior to 1850, the remains of the first two towers were taken away. But this hill was still known as Cook's Study Hill. Now, there's supposed to be a freshwater spring near here that possesses medicinal properties. And I actually think, I think it'll be just down here. The, the towers would be just up there. And if you just look down there, I think, I think that would be the spring. But in this weather, it's absolutely dry. But I, I bet it's there. I was hoping to have a drink. I could do with something medicinal. Let's have a walk down towards Snailsden Reservoir, see if we can get out of the wind. Be nice to be by the water. Now, Cook Study Hill. Another thing that happened up here was uh, a daring gang of burglars back in the 1850s, this is. They were found hiding out up here after they'd been terrorizing Honley and Home Firth for, for many, many months. Uh, they were find, found hiding out amongst all the ruins uh, with all their uh, burgling equipment and apparently with a crowbar that weighed about four stone. So that must have been quite, quite an implement. But uh, the, the, the leader of the gang was uh, brought to justice. He was uh, over six foot tall of a strong build, it said. So uh, imagine coming up here to apprehend them guys. So the third building that was built up there on Cook's Study Hill was actually called Chantry Tower. I'll show you a picture of it there. And um, it was still known though, I think it was called Chantry Tower after the, the designer of it. So it was a, a completely different design. Uh, it, was, it was a lot bigger, this, this thing was a lot bigger. I think it was uh, 20 by 20 by, 
I think maybe 40 feet high, um, a lot bigger structure. And um, it was still known though by the locals as uh, Cook's Study Tower. Here's another strange story about this area, another body, unfortunately, another body of a uh, medicine vendor. I think that's like uh, bottles of fluid that sort of cure all illnesses, uh, elixirs. Um, he was known as the Nably Doctor. I think that's what they called him, something like that anyway. His body was found out here and the verdict on his death, cause of death, was a visitation from God. What does that even mean? So it's a spooky area. We're getting a good view of the hill just there. That's where the towers were. And th them towers could be seen all around. They were a landmark for hundreds of years. It's a lot calmer, the wind down here. You can imagine Chantry Tower, still known locally as Cook's Study Tower, up on that hill there. So I've got another story about this area. Is it another body, Rob? Yes, unfortunately it is. In 1862, the body of Robert Turner was found out here. Now he was from uh, a farm over at Penniston. We're very close to Penniston here. So he's from a farm over there and he was riding his horse out over these moors and it would be boggy in the winter months. And the horse stumbled in deep, deep bog and uh, he fell off his horse and the horse rolled over onto him, pushing his face into the uh, soft peat and that's where he drowned. So you could say it's a bit of a spooky area to contemplate wild camping, <laughs> but I might give it a go one time. But uh, yeah, you'd have all that history looming in the darkness. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. You might be able to hear these people uh, wild swimming still in Snailsden Reservoir. And by the 1870s, Snailsden Reservoir had been built and Cook's study tower was uninhabited. Now I'll just get down here where I can walk a little bit more easily and tell you another story. Is it another body, Rob? You bet you it's another body. The view up there onto Cook's study hill like I say, it can be, there's, a, there's actually a buzzard just hovering just over there, just slightly to the left of the picture. Fantastic Go GoPro footage. The GoPro footage for wildlife, you just can't beat it. It's a real all round camera. Oh yes, we found another body. 1921. Uh, the body of an old grocer, I think he was about 83. He was found in a sitting position out on these moors, uh, found by a farmer's dog on a foggy day. Can you imagine that? Uh, in a sitting position, no sign of any fight or uh, no injuries. And the verdict, the, the cause of death seemed to be a heart attack. The plot thickens. Um, the old man had been out walking with his son, Harry, that day and uh, Harry was nowhere to be found. And later on that day, Harry's sister reported him missing. Now the search for the son Harry continued to grow with the belief that he'd actually committed suicide, thinking that he had caused the death of his father. You see, Harry had been suffering from depression after losing his job, and he'd been seen arguing with his father that day. Now at the time, a local superstition grew that on the ninth day, a drowned man will float to the surface of the water. So a watch was put out on this Snailsden Reservoir and on cue on the ninth day, a dark object floated to the surface. So a local policeman swam out to retrieve the body and at a local hearing, they assumed that um, the sudden death of his father put the, the lad off balance and uh, the verdict was uh, suicide by drowning. 
So we're back up into the wind where the towers were, the three towers that we spoke about. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I'm so glad you've been with me. In the, uh, in the early 1900s, the tower, the last tower was showing signs of weather. When that weather comes in off this moor, it was just destroying it and it started to look very eerie and people said that it was haunted. And with all that goings on, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. But that's it for this vlog. I'm gonna leave you with a little, uh, a little piece from a walking guide from the 1930s, I think, um, that just sums it up, what, what it looked like in them final years. Just ahead lay the pathetic figure of Cook's study, a familiar landmark for many generations. Its glory is now almost departed, and the storms which beat incessantly on this rugged spur of moorland have battered it to the ground. It is now little more than a crumbling ruin, and its value as a landmark is almost gone. When you see some unusual stones out on the moors that just don't look like they should be there, uh, it's worth doing a bit of research because there might be a bigger story and uh, definitely didn't think there'd be that much of a story. So as always, if you've enjoyed this content, like and subscribe. If nothing else, you will have enjoyed the views. Let's just get that old man out of the shot. That's better. Glorious. Yorkshire. I don't know where I'll be next time, but I know I want you with me. So until the next one, bye.